So today we're going over combined loadings to be able to calculate stress when you're dealing more than one particular loading. Now previously we've gone over multiple um, different instances of loading scenarios. We've been able to calculate axial stress due to a load. It could either be a tensile load or a compressive load here. We also been able to calculate previously the shear stress due to a shear load on an object. In addition to, um, we've also been able to calculate the shear stress due to a torsional load. In addition to calculating the bending stress whenever you have a moment on an object. And so the question is, which of these stresses do you use when it comes to a particular object that may be experiencing not just one kind of loading but multiple at the same time well and when it comes to those particular instances you actually utilize something known as superposition so let's say an object is experiencing an axial load so you know this equation but it may also be experiencing a moment as well so you have not just the axial stress but you also have the bending stress and if let's say you want to determine the tensile compressive stresses then the total stress would actually just be a linear combination of the two so you'll have the axial stress plus the bending stress at least the tensile portion of the bending stress because keep in mind you also do have the compressive stress when you're dealing with a, a moment so this is what you would call superposition and works similarly when it comes to shear stresses. And so I think the easiest way to understand this would be essentially to do an example. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this problem statement, we have the sign is subjected to the uniform wind loading as shown. Determine the stress components at point C and D on the 100 millimeter diameter supporting post. So in this instance, as you can see, we have the given dimensions. We have a post and some sort of sign here that is experiencing some wind. So we have 1.5 kilopascals of pressure. So that's uniformly distributed across the sign itself, which is equivalent to 1.5 kilonewtons per meter squared. And of course, you just saw for the resultant force right at the centroid of the pole of the post depending on the geometry in this case is rectangular so we know the center quite easily and then we have the given dimensions of the post three meters up to this cross section that we're zoomed in here of the post and up to the floors two meters so this is the essentially the cross section of the post which we know is circular diameter is 100 millimeters and we're asked to find the stress states um, at point c and point d so First off, we know when there's a wind loading here, the sign is going to be pushed and therefore it's going to want to rotate the post here. So that's going to cause a um, shear stress due to torsion. And we already know the equation for the max shear stress due to torsion, right? which is the torque times the radius divided by polar moment of inertia here. And this, of course, is going to be equivalent to the shear stress that's experiencing at point C, as well as the shear stress at point D, because they're both at the outer surface of the circular post. And so you're going to be using the same radius value here, which in this case is the maximum shear stress the post will be experiencing. So first off, what exactly is the torque that we're going to be using? Well, since we have this uniform loading of 1.5 kilopascal or 1.5 kilonewton per um, meter squared, first off, for the resultant force at the centroid, so let's call it FR, the resultant force, which is equivalent to the pressure times the area of this post sign, right? We have the dimensions 2 meters and as well as 1 meters here. So let's go ahead and plug in the values which gives us three kilonewtons, but what exactly is the torque on the post due to this force? So we already know force is three kilonewtons and we know the approximate location of the center here, but of course this is all with respect to the center of the post by which it will be rotating, which is right here. And we know since the diameter is 100 millimeters, the radius here is 50, so it's going to be, um, at this centroid, we have 
half of two meters, which gives us one meter, plus the 50 millimeter radius. So the equation of torque is force times the perpendicular distance to the post, which gives us the cre three kilonewtons times one plus 0 0.05 um, meters, which gives us a torque of 3.15 kilonewtons meters. And so we're gonna, this is the torque that we're gonna be using to plug into the maximum shear stress due to torsion. And we just solve, um, we just plug in for the equation and solve for the maximum shear stress. So finally, after plugging in all the values, the shear stress at both point C and D are equivalent, which gives us 16,043 kilonewtons per meter squared, or 16,043 kilopascals, or you could convert it to megapascals, 16 megapascals approximately. So this is the shear stress caused due to the wind loading on the post. Now, another question is, is there any other um, shear stress developed due to this external load on the posting and I don't see any other shear stresses on the post besides this torsional shear stress. So this is the value for the shear stress. So now let's look into any potential stresses developed. Um, in this case we saw for the shear stress. Now do any actual stresses develop within the post due to the loading, in this case the wind loading in particular. And we see we do actually have a resultant force on the sign post which ultimately is supported by the post itself. And so one thing to consider as well is since the post itself is supporting this load, you could essentially simplify this and look at the post itself only and be able to draw that same resultant force on the post and just look at it from a more of a statics perspective kind of looking at the post itself with this external load being applied at this particular location we know the centroid here is going to be half of one meter so we know the dimensions from the bottom of the post all the way to where this load is being applied and calculated that way so Always keep in mind to simplify the drawing as much as possible just to make sure there isn't any possible confusion. So let's go ahead and draw out the post by itself. So now I went ahead and drew the post again with the necessary dimensions. In this case, we have the resultant force FR being applied here. Now in this particular case, since we were asked to look at the stress states at C and D, this is where we're going to be calculating the moment with respect to this specific position in the post. So in other words, to be able to calculate the moment is going to be the resultant force times the distance from that position. In this particular instance is three plus 0.5 meters. So let's go ahead and calculate the moment which gives us 10.5 kilonewtons meters. So one thing I do want you guys to recall is going back to your statics course where we did the shear and moment diagrams, which you could actually do for this um, post and you would be able to draw the moment diagram in particular and find um, due to this resultant force here on the post, at what position would it be the maximum moment that the post would be experiencing. Now in this particular problem statement, we're looking at this specific position, which is why we're using the 3.5 meter as our to solve for the stress states at point C and D. So going back to the bending stress equation, it's equivalent to the moment times the C, which is the distance from the neutral axis to the location where we're trying to solve for the bending shear stress. Now, one thing to keep in mind, let me go ahead and draw out. So depending on the position, you could always redraw and reorient, reorient everything um, in a way that simplifies it for you to be able to see things. But so after some time of practicing, you realize in this specific orientation, the post along point D, this is where the neutral axis is since we're seeing a bending moment in this direction here. This is the bending moment, here's the neutral axis. So automatically this means the bending stress at D is equivalent to zero. So that one was pretty simple. However, point C, as you would see, the C dimension here from the neutral axis would be equivalent to the radius or 50 millimeters.
So now that we solved the moment, we have C, then we just plug into the bending stress equation with the moment of inertia and solve accordingly for the stress state at C. And this will give us a bending stress, an axial stress of 106,952 kilopascals or 100 and um, rounding up 107 megapascals for the stress state at point C. And keep in mind in this particular case, it's a compressive stress so it's going to be a negative value just one thing to keep in mind and so this is what you normally do when it comes to dealing with a a loading scenario in which multiple different um in this case you have a shear stress being developed as well as an axial stress now there are additional scenarios where the axial stress um, not only would it include a bending stress but it may also have a load um, let's say uh, actual weight, which in this act, which in this example was neglected, right? The post itself, the sign, depending on the size, could have some actual weight, and it will contribute to the compressive stress. So in this instance, this problem is a little bit uh, more simplified. However, once you start practicing solving more problems, you'll be able to get. Uh, intuition in regards to what you need to consider and what you may be missing in this case a little bit simplified and we saw for the stress states at c and d the actual stress compresses stress at, at at c is this value 107 megapascals the actual stress developed at d is zero and we had the maximum shear stress previously